live any seconds to you are we're live now okay good evening or good afternoon everybody my name is david ellsmere i'm from the cardiff blue supporters club sorry you can't see me we're having issues with uh, my camera here but that's my issue not the cardiff blues uh welcome to this uh, virtual q a session i'm sure we've all got used to using zoom over the last few months um thanks to the club for the opportunity to be partner of this um, like you, I'm sure we're looking forward to actually getting some real rugby, even if unfortunately we won't be able to be in the ground. It seems like a long time since uh, the last home game versus Benetton in the rain in February. Um, a few players have left the club, but it would be sad to um, say goodbye to them and not be able to actually do that at the Arms Park. Obviously, Big Nick and James Down, amongst others. But this evening, we're focusing on some, um, the new signings. So it's a welcome back to Reese and Corey and a welcome to Luke. Um, tonight's about the new signings, as to say, um, having a chat with them and seeing what it's like to be at, at the Arms Park. Um, but first of all, I'd like to hand over to John Mulvihill, who's going to give an update on the goings on behind the scenes in the last few months. OK, I'm back. Thanks. Thanks, David. I was in a waiting room there. Just seems like we're having a couple of issues with John's uh, John's connection there. Let me just uh, try and bring him back in a second. Let's see if he's still frozen. Yeah, John, John's uh, obviously having some uh, connection uh, issues there. So we'll get um, Reese and Luke in straight away. Um, we're just waiting for Corey to join us as well, but we'll dip in and out with uh, the players and... Um, John, of course, as well as his uh, his dodgy pont kind of connection comes back. Um, boys, uh, thanks very much for joining us again. You've um, just done one with the uh, corporates and uh, sponsors, which uh, went down really well. But uh, great to have you here again with um, our supporters. Rhys, uh, welcome back. And as I said earlier, you know, it, it can't feel like you've been away for very long at all, if at all. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, like I said earlier, it's, it's literally only been about 13, 14 months since I left in the first place. So don't get me wrong, they've been a long 13, 14 months, but um, I'm back now and I've enjoyed my experiences uh, at Saracens and at the World Cup. And I'm, I'd like to think I've gained some uh, experience and coming back a better player than when I left. What um, what did you pick up from your time in, in Saracens? Uh, and perhaps not just Saracens, but you know that last twelve months, eighteen months, which has you know been a whirlwind for you, really. Um, it's hard to say, really, but I just being exposed to different environments, different levels of rugby, like the training um, intensities and different training styles, of different coaches, has really like gave me an overall more better understanding of the game, really. Great stuff. And Luke, for yourself, obviously, uh, we're going to be joined by Corey a little later on, who's also um, spent time at Cardiff Blues previously. But for yourself, you're you're truly the, truly the new boy. You're one of the youngest in the senior squad. Um, can you just kind of give uh, the supporters a, a brief um, outline of your career so far and uh, how you got to this point? Yeah, um, I'm a Neef boy, so... From a young age, I went through the Ospreys Academy and age grade, played 16s, 18s and 20s Wales. And whilst playing at 18s for the Ospreys, I then moved to Worcester for two years, crossed the bridge and experienced something new. Um, they put us straight in the senior academy with the first team, so that helped a lot because you're training along with the first team. Okay, a lot of experience, which was great. And then I finally moved back across to home in the Cardiff Blues now. It's quite a, a big decision for you to make, um, you know, when you're just in the academy of the Ospreys to go across to Worcester. Um, what, what did that do for your career? Um, I think probably the main thing that attracted me most about Worcester is I went up there, had a look around, and I think the facilities that they have is probably second to none. And... They let the senior academy guys train with the first team. And I think the experience you get from, from such a young age training with the likes of Bentio, Francois Hogan, and people like that is amazing. So I, thought, I think that's what made me go. 
Great stuff. And who was uh, who were the tens there at the time, and you know, which which players did you kind of pick up most from in in that position? Uh, John Olance and Duncan Weir. Right. Yeah. And I think yeah, Dunk was a great great to have that as well because we done a lot of kicking and with John, John was my mentor, so. We used to watch games back together, the three of us, and talk about things on the pitch. And they were just really good to have. You know, as a young guy coming through, having people like that you can look at. And it's the same with Jared and Tub now. I'm always trying to look for things where I can improve and where they can help me as well. So it's great to have. Brilliant. And we're joined now by uh, John, who's managed to get his uh, connection back. So, John, obviously, um, I was just starting to uh, ask, you, ask you the question, basically, about... Um, returning to rugby what that's been like for you in the last uh it's probably been about six seven weeks we, we've been back now i think um and what your hopes are for these uh three with us tonight i think it was an absolute godsend for everyone i think um they were over not involved and seeing each other on a day-to-day -day basis but to the, to all of their credit and a lot of the, the the other players and staff they they kept themselves busy kept themselves in touch so um, look, we know it wasn't easy for anyone um, in the UK. Uh, and obviously, Wales was a little bit more stringent than that. So it's taken its time, but we've been patient. And we're back into it now. So uh, it's been really good. There's obviously, um, you know, the craziness you've got to go through each morning to you know, get online and go through all your forms and then to get your temperature taken and once a week get things shoved up your nostrils and down your mouth and... You know, once you work out which person to go to, it makes it a little bit easier on a Thursday morning to go in there. But uh, it's really good. We're happy we're started now and we get a good head out uh, tomorrow uh, for the first time uh, as an internal trial, really. So with, with the boys, I just heard Luke talk a little bit, bit there. Um, for a young kid, he's been fantastic for us. He's really he's set, he's settled in really well into our environment. And one of the things um, we spoke about when I first met him was uh, he thought his talk on field was pretty good and that's something that we really need to work on for our young backs and he certainly brings that and he's already found um, he's got a little bit of a standing in the group. So really good with the, the ball in hand, good kicking game. So, you know, he's ticking all the boxes at a young age for us. So we will look to continual improvement uh, with him and I look forward to working quite closely with him. Um, big Red. Obviously, he was lucky we didn't fall out last year when he went to Saracens. Uh, we had a couple of heated conversations, but he actually left. He left on good terms, um, you know. And he went on to represent Wales in the World Cup, had a fantastic tournament, and and then you know things happen in rugby where opportunities come quite quickly, and it, it was an opportunity for us to bring him back. And we had a couple of decent conversations, and it's good to bring him back in the fold. But he knows he's in a position we've got. You know, a few good loose heads running around and we had a, a decent chat today about specifically what I want to see from him tomorrow, that when we get round a, um, a selection table that, you know, his first his name will be first pick. So um, we've all got work on, both coaches and players, and he's just got that ability to do something special for us. And, um, you know, we'll work hard with him to make sure he's, he's in the frame for us and obviously for Wales going forward. And... Um, and obviously, Corey, um, you know, it's funny. This afternoon, we let the players run their own 10 minutes and they went on for about half an hour. So that's probably that they were they late to the last engagement. Had we run half an hour, Corey would have absolutely lost it. But it's OK when uh, players go over time. But it's great to have him back. And to be fair, Corey will tell you, we haven't really spoken too much about um, what I expect from him in the group. I just wanted him to settle back into playing rugby <coughs> and blues and... He's been, it's been quite seamless for him. And a lot of, you know, plays a lot of rugby with a lot of his mates coming through the ages and age grades. And it's great to have him back at the club. And I'm sure he's going to be awesome for us. And in the next number of weeks, particularly building into next week, we'll talk about specifically what I want from him. He knows we lack in a little bit of leadership and what he can bring on the field is awesome. I think, you know, we've got some good leaders, but sometimes they're a bit quiet on field. And it's something that I'd expect from Corey that he'll bring that talk in the moment so we don't rude miss chances in reviews where we can actually make things happen on field so he'll be core to making that happen brilliant Corey I'm sure you uh heard a lot of that then um we're just asking Rick and Luke about uh 
coming back in Reese's case and for Luke uh, coming back to Wales generally. Uh, for yourself, coming back to Cardiff Blues, uh, how pleased are you to be back and what was behind um, your decision to return? Yeah, look, I'm very pleased to be back. Um, uh, obviously, the Cardiff Blues got a very exciting team and um, loads of quality players there. And I obviously I linked up with a few of the players during the Welsh camp and stuff and had a good few chats with John and um, Dickie Holland and obviously Alan as well. Um, and like the vision the club are going in and like the right direction and stuff. So, so yeah, there's a lot happening off field as well, So which which is massive for me. And look, I am... Um, I'm here to play play some good rugby, and it's a very exciting time. Uh, we've got some great, great players, especially in the back line, which is which very really excites me. So, and I assume when you were at Cardiff Blues initially coming through the academy, you were up at the Vale as a training centre, and uh, been a few changes since then. But you know, really good facilities the boys have actually got now at Pen Twin and uh, Pen Twin and Wiz. Yeah, look, yeah, it was uh, many moons ago now when I was, I was coming through. Um, I think it was about eight, eight or nine years ago. Um, yeah, we had some good times at the Vale. And, yeah, I think you recently moved moved to the Arms Park. And, obviously, now that, that's been um, used as a hospital at the minute. So, so our new place is, is Pentwin Leisure Centre. And it's great to see what um, a few of the partners have done. Spiced it up a little bit, get, the, get it all ready for the boys to be down there. Um, look, it's, it's, it's exciting for us. It's a new home. Um it's new for all the players, not just me myself. So, um, yeah, it's very exciting times. We um, there's a lot of work going on down at Pen Twin as well to get it to get it right for for us and as a new home. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, some of the partners that have been you know, really integral over this uh, period for us. High Motive, Dragon Signs, too, in particular, have really been a helping hand. And you've obviously got your own uh, business in a, you know in a similar kind of area in electrical engineering. Uh, J.R. Davis, how's that been for you? Know, this period lockdown, how's that been for you? Has it been a busy time? Yeah, it's been pretty busy. Busy, obviously, we're in the construction construction industry, so so yeah, it went a little bit quiet. Um, a few sites was was obviously closed during COVID at the start, but luckily enough for us, a few of our sites were still open, so we kept everyone in work, uh, kept everyone busy, and um, yeah, it's starting to pick back up now afterwards. Obviously, construction is is one of the industries which is which is booming at the minute. So, so it's lucky for us. Yeah, like you said, I got I got a lot going off the field as well as on the field. I think it's very important as a rugby player to um, keep your mind focused when you're in rugby. In rugby, sorry, but then obviously have something outside of rugby as well for obviously it's a short career. So, so something to look forward to in the future as well. Reese, um, phrase Corey used there really stood out. Keep your mind focused. Now, you spent. 12 weeks in that London flat by yourself in uh, you know, the yeah. toughest time of, of lockdown. How, how difficult was was that for you? And um, kind of how much of a challenge has it been getting, you know, because you can only do so much, getting your fitness back up to the level where you, you are now in training? Uh, yeah, obviously spending that amount of time on your own isn't, isn't good for anyone. And um, look, I, I think I saw about three people in total in about 12 weeks. So... It was tough. It was tough being on my own. Hope, like, thankfully, I had obviously Zoom and boys were online on the PS4 every day because nobody had it. Nobody else had anything else, anything better to do. So um, that kept me entertained for a bit. And then just trying to get outside every day, at least once a day, go for a walk, go for a run, do a little bit here or there, the, the weekly shop or what have you. But um, like, it, was, it was a long time, and I, I know everyone, everyone went through it. And we all had our different sort of experiences of it, but um, I'm glad it's behind me now and I can focus on training. Great stuff. And uh, we, we're starting to get a few questions from uh, the viewers in, so we'll start going through a few of those. So it's one for all three of you boys, if you, if you can. Um, what are you most uh, excited about with this return to rugby? I think, well, especially for me, it's just getting back into some sort of like normality. So obviously, this is what we haven't been used to. Well, no one's ever experienced anything like this, and uh, we're used to playing week in, week out. So I think, oh, hopefully, like with these two games, um, it'll give us a sense of back being back to reality again. Luke, no, I'm just can't wait to get playing again. I can't. I think my last match was probably about five or six months ago. So can't wait to get the ball back in my hands, back and smashed around by some forward. <laughs> and what about for yourself, Corey? I was saying to you earlier, you know, 
there's the potential that your second game in a Cardiff Blue shirt back at Rodney Parades, you know, familiar surroundings for you. Yeah, look, I'm just, I'm just glad there's not going to be any Dragon supporters there. I'm sure, <laughs> obviously, the stadium's going to be empty. So, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be obviously, it's, it's weird. Is um, it'll be weird for all the boys. But as I said earlier, I'm just glad we're in the home change room, not the away one, because it's, it's pretty small there. But um, look, we're all busting to get back to it. We, we've been out of action for four months. It's probably the longest break most of us players have ever had since we started our professional career. So, so yeah, everyone's, everyone's going to be excited. Who knows what these games are going to be like? Um, it's definitely a building block for us. We've got two games now. Hopefully, we can build and, and try out new things and, and get ourselves prepped for when the league does start back, I think, in October. Yeah, and obviously, for, you, for yourself, seasoned professional, you know, whereas the other two are starting out, you mentioned that long break you guys have had. How, how beneficial is that for you guys who, you know, particularly guys who've done the World Cup as well and had a real relentless last kind of 12 months or so? It must have done you a world of good. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a blessing in disguise for a lot of the players. They've had um, probably two long seasons dragged into one. Uh, unfortunately for myself, I was probably injured for most of those, so pretty frustrating to, to then come from um, being injured for a year to getting back fit playing. Um, had another little blip in, in during the Six Nations and then been off for another few months. So, so yeah, look, pretty frustrating time for me, but um, kept myself pretty fit during lockdown. I was lucky enough to have a home gym and, and um, the WIU uh, loaned me the walk bike as well, so kept myself pretty fit. And we've um, we've certainly been put through our paces down at the Cardiff Blues since we've been back in. So, so look, I think we're all ready mentally, mentally and physically now. It's just about getting out there and, and putting putting into practice into the game um, next Saturday. Yeah, you, you mentioned the what bike there. It reminded me, you obviously did that um, challenge during lockdown as well. Was it for ten of us cancer care? Yeah, that's right. I'm a patron for ten of us cancer charity. So, um, so yeah, is, is it? It's a terrible time for everyone in the world. Uh, what's going on? But uh, for the for the cancer charities and the cancer patients, it's probably even worse because they go through it with with cancer and stuff and can't see their loved ones and, and stuck in hospitals. And obviously, with all the with all the charity work, the the ten of us usually do. All the shops are closed down. All the fundraising events are down. So yeah, so they they asked on their patrons to do a few challenges and try and raise a bit of money, which which me and Dylan done together. Dylan came in on it. Uh, we cycled 220 miles, I think it was. Um, over three sit-ins, we done. I think it was 150 the one day and and 70 the in the morning, which was which was pretty good fun. We had uh, Rupert Moon join along with us and and a few others. So yeah, that was pretty challenging in the in the backyard and on the walk bike. I think it would have been probably easier to do it, seeing the views from North Wales to South Wales. But you know, we done it. We um, I think we raised about seven and a half thousand, which which was that's massive, brilliant. massive help to the charity. Yeah, that's great stuff. We've got a couple of questions coming in for. Um... For you, Reese, actually, um, one from Liam Belcher, which we'll uh, skip <laughs> over. But uh, Mike Myers on uh, YouTube is uh, asking who you see as the biggest threat to uh, you in the number one jersey. I, I don't want to ask you that directly, but you know, in terms of the the competition, the strength and depth at Loosehead, but also the whole front row, um, how, how challenging is it, and you know, how good is it for you? Yeah, I mean, as a youngster coming through, you're at you know, you look forward to being challenged in training. And I think with the, the good group of young young lads in the front row, mixed with a couple of the older boys, um, it's providing a good mix. And the sessions we're doing at the moment, again, pretty tasty. And um, obviously, not scrummaging for a while. So I think we'll get back into it. And you know, very well. I don't think any of us enjoy it. But um, we're we'll, we'll getting used to it again. And hopefully, yeah, we'll see what's to come. Brilliant stuff. Uh, and just a question here, probably, which I'll, um, I'll send your way, uh, your way actually, um, Luke. I've just lost it here a second. Um, but it was basically asking, um, what do you think you can bring to Cardiff Blues? What are your attributes as a player? Um, I think that, obviously, the back line is really exciting. It's a mixture of old players, young players, everything. So I'd like to try to fit in there in any position wherever I could help. But as a player, I'm probably pretty basic out to that. I like to kick, I like to run the ball when it's on. I think I could play a bit of heads up rugby, which the coaches of the Cardiff Army Park and Blues are helping me a lot with. But I think that's the main thing is 
knowing where we are on the pitch and what we're going to do, I think that comes with experience as well. And that's what I'm trying to learn at the minute with the coaches and obviously with Garrett and Tav. So I think with experience, I can sort of bring that to the team as well. Yeah, and this next question from uh, Chris Miles on Facebook, probably best to address this one to uh, Reese first of all, as someone who's uh, been here recently, and then Corey as someone who's obviously been in that Welsh scene and uh, watched a lot of regional rugby and you know, obviously played against Cardiff Blues a lot. But what, what do you think we need to do as a team to kind of reach that next level? Um, for me, I think, um, obviously I haven't played with many of the boys for a while, but... I think we need to get that cohesion again that we had a couple of years ago when we um, won the Challenge Cup out in Bilbao. And I think that year really showed that if, if you work well together as a team and do the best thing right there, you can win things. So I think if we start to get that back and move forward as a team, that will really help us. Yeah, and Corey? Yeah, the biggest thing for me is consistency. Um, We've proved over the last couple of years the Cardiff Blues um, can beat anyone on the day. It's just about bringing that consistency, especially in the league, um, trying to challenge, trying to get in that Champions Cup and then kicking on from there. Um, the strength and depth of the Blues at the minute is is, is top-notch. Everyone's pushing each other for places in training. And uh, I certainly wouldn't like to be the coach selecting the team for next Saturday because everyone's um, chomping at the bit. But, yeah, it's definitely consistency because on the day, the, the boys have proved over the last couple of seasons they can beat anyone. Yeah, what well, what do you put that put that down to that um, that inconsistency at times? I'm not too sure. Hopefully, I can add a little bit and um, <laughs> get over the next couple of years. Yeah, great stuff. I, I've got a question here from Ellen Parker on uh, Facebook. I know her son is absolutely Cardiff Blues mad, rugby mad. She's asking, what advice would you give to kind of grassroots kids playing rugby to keep up their enthusiasm for the game and uh, you know? keep enjoying the game when they can't actually train and play with their mates? Who's answering that one? Sorry, you got that, Corey? Just a, me, advice, sorry. Yeah, if you can. Advice to uh, grassroots kids of how uh, they can keep uh, enjoying the game when they can't play. Oh, that's a difficult one. None of us have been through it before. Um, just try and just get out with the ball and try and keep your skill level. Um, obviously, when I don't know, depending on what age you are. I think it's, I think when I was a youngster, it was all about enjoying it. I, I just wanted to play all sorts of sports. Um, just just play as many as you can and, and just, just play with a smile on your face, you know. Just obviously, if you can get out with, with the ball, um, just keep the skill levels up and, and just keep on practicing and enjoying it. Yeah, anything else to add to that, lad? Just don't, don't lose that fire inside you, that, that desire to play rugby. I think uh, that's been all of us coming through as we were younger. So I think we all we all start somewhere. And if you don't start from the bottom, where else are you going to start from? There's another question here. Which I, I assume it's been released, which is asking uh, when you made the basically when you made the decision to come back. But obviously that was done a while before lockdown, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what was behind, obviously, you know, the, the fallout of Saracens, we won't get into the kind of technicalities of that, but simple decision then to come back to your home region? Yeah, I think with everything that unfolded with the World Cup and obviously what happened with Saris and that, they, um, well, what, what went on behind the scenes there, I think it was a perfect opportunity for me to come back. Like, in, in two years' time, I was looking to come back anyway, uh, come back to Wales and come back to and I think, given what happened, I think it was the perfect time for me, really. And there's another question here which touches on um, something Corey was mentioning earlier. Uh, you know, how do you feel about playing in an empty stadium? Uh, it's going to be going to be pretty strange, isn't it? I don't think it'll be as different for you know Premier League footballers who are going from you know 50, 60, 70 thousand every week, but it's still going to be pretty bizarre, isn't it? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um... It's going to be a very strange time for us, but look, unfortunately, uh, we are where we are. And I think if you ask the boys, what they'd rather do is play in front of no fans and get the games on, and they can watch us. Um, they can watch us on telly or, or not watch us at all, you know. So I think for fans and players, it's just about getting some sort of normality back, get get rugby back playing, and hopefully we can um, we can sort something out and and we can get some um, gate fees and get some fans back in the stadiums pretty soon. 
There's another question here from uh, Trish. I don't know if you can pick this one up, Reese. Uh, where, where do you see Cardiff Blues this time next year, and how do you feel you can contribute? Uh, it's just like I mentioned earlier, just I think these two games will show us where we are and what we need to improve on and what we're doing well. And um, look, for me, hopefully, if I'm lucky enough to work hard enough and get the nod, uh, I just want to bring that, that bit of edge, that bit of. Um, ball carrying, which I, which I enjoy doing, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll try and do what I do, and hopefully all the other boys will do what they do, and if we can all do that, then I can't see why we can't have a good season. Yeah, these these games directly, there's not a huge amount on the line for us with the way the, the end of the season's been decided, um, but is there an opportunity to kind of use it as a springboard into next season? It's only a small, you know, I think it's a month between the final game of this season and next season. You know, it's a big opportunity there, is it? Yeah, exactly. Like these, like these games, although may not mean anything in the grand scheme of things, it's still Welsh derby, and I think it'll still mean a lot to the boys involved, and it means a lot to the clubs, it means a lot to everyone. And um, I think if we could put down a marker and make a statement in these two games, then that'll give us a, a good uh, head start going into the season. Yeah, and what, what what's your uh, last experience or abiding memory of uh, playing in Welsh derbies? Uh, I think. Um, it was Scarlett's at home, and uh, I think we were beating him quite convincingly. And uh, we were on our own five metre line, and somebody turned the ball over in the ruck, and I picked it up. And I was about to run, and uh, Gareth Anscombe screamed, Pass it at me. So I just panicked and threw a Hail Mary, and uh, a winger intercepted it on our try, on our try line and walked in for an easy try. So uh, I got a bit of stick for that, but thankfully we won the game anyway. Good stuff. Uh, got a question here from Robert Phillips, probably most appropriate to um, you, Luke, I think. Um, what, what are your kind of goals having joined Cardiff Blues, both uh, long term and short term? Um, probably short term is just get as much experience as I can and trying to improve as a player and a person as much as I can as well. And that be, whether it's speaking to Jared, have about different scenarios on the pitch or the coaches, learning different skills. And then that's probably short term. Long term, then probably in eight, nine, ten years' time, we'll hopefully be playing for Wales and be in the squad for the national side. Yeah, we, we were talking earlier about the the amount of young talent in the Cardiff Blues squad, and you, you mentioned seeing the likes of what Jared Evans, Owen Lane, and your youngsters have kind of really kicked on quickly. Have done at Cardiff Blues. That was part of your decision to come here. Yeah, it's um, really impressive, like the likes of Reese, Owen, Jara, Thomas. They've had their Welsh start for such a age, and I think that's probably down to the who go around the map, the Cardiff Blue, and the coaching staff and the facilities as well. So that was the big thing about me coming to hopefully improve my game down there, where I could push on to the next level. Then. Good stuff. And for you, one for you, Corey. Got a question from Andrew Collins. Uh, which kind of young players have stood out for you and kind of you expect could kind of make an impression this year? Sorry, what was that? Sorry? Which which young players in the squad do you think could kind of break through this year and make a big impression? Um, well, obviously, you, you, look, you still look at um, Jared and Thomas as young players and they've been absolutely outstanding. And then you look at, you look at our, um, our back three, which you've got... Um, Owen Lane is still, still very young and obviously had a few caps last year and, and has, has shown a lot of excitement in training. Um, you've got Luke just signing in from Worcester, which is which is obviously promising. Um, but as, as many youngsters, you've got, you've got boys in the, in the forwards pack um, working a little bit with Teddy Williams. He's coming through as a second row. Um, obviously, Seb Davis is still still very young as well. And, and yeah, I'd like to see Seb have a very good season himself and hopefully he can break break into the Welsh squad and play a little bit more as well. Um, but I've been very impressed with the with the front rowers as well. Uh, you've got Corey and um, Keen Azarati, which which is still pretty young and, and probably had a lot lot more experiences than a lot of the other youngsters. And and yeah, they are, they are really impressive in training as well. Yeah, just a question for all, all three of you. Uh, who's the most uh, talented player you've played with and against? And if you want to take it first, please, since you're not right. Ah, that's a um, that's a tough one. That is, I think. Um, obviously, we've been at the Blues, we've been at the Starries uh, last year. I think uh, 
it'd be quite hard to single one player up. Uh, I've played with a lot of gifted rugby players and uh, played a lot against a lot of uh, gifted rugby players as well. Um, I, I couldn't, on the spot, I, I couldn't think of one person in particular that um, stood out for me, really. What about playing against? Uh, obviously, World Cup, uh, playing against South Africa, playing against New Zealand, you could probably pick any one of those players out of those two. Um, I remember when we went to the Tarot and the and Reese was all the time. I would have been 18, I think, and I think probably found his game from his job. And I just remember when he had the ball in his arms and he was just dancing people, offloads, everything. And I remember he got him in more. Really. Corey? Yeah, I'm going to stay in Wales for that one. I'm, I'm going for the player I played with, would probably be uh, Tulupe Falato. Um, obviously, I was pretty young at the Dragons when I first started playing, and he was there. He's, he's pretty special. He can do pretty much everything. And another one who's um, who's the same is, is Justin Tipperick. Um, playing, obviously, played against him regional rugby, but I've obviously played with him as well. He's, he's pretty special. I don't think there's anything he can't do. Brilliant. What One for... Um... Probably yourself and uh, Reese. Uh, so, as people who have grown up in the region, who, who are your kind of favourite all-time Cardiff Blues players? Someone like Paul Tito, perhaps, or someone like yourself, Corey, or yeah, definitely. I um, I was having a chat with um John Mulville, I think it was yesterday, and said like when we were youngsters, seventeen, eighteen, we I got to play with Paul, and yeah, he was definitely a um, cult hero only at at Cardiff, and he's he's a pretty special bloke, and he helped us as youngsters. Um, a lot of the time we were in the academy and he was club captain and, and he spent hours of his time uh, helping us, whether he was on and off the field. He was, he was a great book. Reese, uh, I think for me, it'd be an obvious choice uh, being Gethin, um, being in the same position, being the leg that he is and what, what he's gone on to achieve in his career. Um, I couldn't think of anyone better to look up to, really. And just one finally, um, we'll finish with this one, I think, but for yourself, Luke, the new guy. Uh, who's the, where is it? Who's the biggest comic at Cardiff Blues? So who's the biggest clown you've encountered so far? <laughs> Definitely Corey Donkowski, 100%. Yeah, 100%, <laughs> that guy is crazy. And he is the hardest person, the softest person in the whole squad as well. I would say, we, we probably shouldn't go into why you're, you're saying he's the biggest clown after, uh, a couple of embarrassments for him in recent weeks I've heard about. But uh, boys, really appreciate um, you taking the time to join us. I know um, you've had a long day training, so um, rest up and uh, good luck for next week. For all our viewers, thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, and uh, we we'll hope to get you on part very soon when uh, all this settles down a little bit. But um, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.